Dungeons and Dragons. Some claim it's a simple, harmless game. What do you guys think happened? One of the players Robbie played with got carried away and killed him. Well, that's kind of far out. Mazes and Monsters is a far out game. Swords, poison, spells, battles, maiming, killing. Hey, it's all imagination. Is it? You have stumbled into the abyss of fire. You are no more. I have a spell to save me. There is no protection. You will burn forever and ever in eternal torment. You are no more. Go! Go! Game goes on. Roll. I've reached the deepest dungeon. I'm now lord of the little people. The treasure is in your sight. Power beyond imagination for the winner to wield for all eternity. Fate turns her face against you. The dragon has you in its mouth. The dragon slowly opens its mouth. No! I'll do anything! I must win! There's only one way to save yourself. And that way is blood. Blood? David, honey, I'll be right back. Only blood will satisfy the dragon. Yours are one of the little people you control. You may substitute their blood for your life, but without a sacrifice, you lose all. You die a horrible death. You lose the power. All right, so there's a bunch of stuff in here that we can kind of unpack, but you know, the, the biggest thing, a lot of times what comes up in, you know, on the internet, on social media, even you know our own comments and our own videos is you know this accusation of bad DMing, and we <laughs> see it happen really quick. I feel like, and first of all, I just want to say that anyone that goes to the other side of the screen and takes the initiative to run the game for other people, you know, I think they deserve a little bit of leeway. Instead of just accusing them of bad DMing, let's remember that there's other players at the table as well. And so that the more that I involve myself in the game, the more depressed. I started to feel. And a seven charisma. The dark shadows of the day soon crept into Mike's dreams as wild, grisly nightmares haunted his sleep. I would see just horrific, awful, awful, just bloody and horrible creatures hacking at my friends and and I would and I would stand there and watch my friends as they would be just hacked apart and they were just incredibly gory dreams and I would, I would wake up at night, you know, oftentimes, you know, oftentimes I, I'd be so upset that I would not be able to sleep for the rest of the evening. You know, I can tell the difference between reality and fantasy. Just about everyone I play with can. Going to join the Great Hall. You can't. It's a trap. I have spells. I'm going to fly. You don't have enough points. I am the maze controller. Maze, co maze controller? Yes. And I have absolute authority in this game. This accusation of bad DMing. And we <laughs> see it happen really quick, I feel like. You have eyewitnesses. For instance, one case, the parents were actually saw their child summon uh, Dungeons and Dragons demons into his room before he killed himself. Another case, the kid had thought he had the ability to astral travel coming from the D Dungeons and Dragons game that he could leave his body and come back and he had rigged it up just according to the rule book so he could do it he was surrounded by his materials and put a bullet in his head so he could leave his body and he's never come back 
this is make-believe, and nobody's murdered, and there's no violence there. I mean, uh, to, to use an analogy with another game, who is bankrupted by losing a game of Monopoly? Nobody is, because the money is make-believe, the property is make-believe. Dungeons and Dragons is a real serious problem. But as we'll see in the upcoming few moments, the problems with role-playing games have moved far beyond Dungeons and Dragons. Because in Japan, I've heard that like they're really into the role-playing games where you, you don't just bash people and kill them. You go around and you got to use your head and stuff. But here, it's sort of half and half. Kids are becoming acclimated to this very kind of thing. And I began to look through the instruction manual, and I see here how to cast magical spells and uh, ma mage spells and cleric spells. And you go to the pages that it's listed on, in this instance, page 41. And they have complete descriptions of how to cast spells and how to contact powerful spirits and how to use these spirits and these powers to overcome, obviously, uh, evil or good because there is both white and black magic in these books. We picked up another one to see if that was just coincidence and it's dungeon magic here. And we look through again and we see in here casting magic spells, page 22, with a complete description and it says here on... Um, each wizard has mastered a certain type of magic. When you meet a wizard, he will give you four basic elements of his mystical studies. So we have a wizard now teaching the children of his magical studies. And then here it says, it is important to remember that the source of all magic is the life force of the user. This is the teaching of the occult. This is exactly what we were introduced into in Star Wars and E.T., that there is some magical power, some life force that runs throughout the universe, and it is this power that we can ta tap into for either good or evil. It's a force, and a powerful power it is. It's energy to us, to us, to bind us, to bind us. Dungeons and Dragons is one of over 300 fantasy role-playing games on the market today. At least 4 million players have accepted the invitation to enter into the fantasy dream world of sorcery, swords, and demons. In Dungeons and Dragons, what you do is to create a fantasized universe of the mind in which expediency to achieve your goal is more important than any kind of moral frame of reference to your actions. I have letter after letter where people took the pieces. Now, there's sixes involved in the pieces of the game, but they yeah. take the pieces of the game, they would throw them in the incinerator or the fireplace. And They'd been talking about it in church, and they took my books, including my deities and demigods, original edition, and they burnt them. They actually burnt them? They burnt them in a stupid church thing, and I was like, Come on, you guys! And screams would come out. Seriously? Uh, what, what are the pieces, for instance? Well, this game affects the most intelligent of our children. It's time to stop! Where are your parents? <laughs> and the pieces include white witches, wizards, necromancers, the, the clerics, that type of thing. It includes evil wizards. It's a white versus black witchcraft. I, I don't think anyone is suggesting that you're intentions originally in this game were anything but but good. It was a game to have some fun. Mm -hmm. But in the light of what some people would consider to be strong evidence, don't you really think that you have to rethink your position about the game and at least make known the potential for abuse of the game? Well, I, I, I again have to go back and say there's no link that, that this is, except perhaps in the, in the minds of those people who are looking desperately for any other cause than perhaps their own failure as a parent. Yes. Robbie? There's blood on my knife. Knife? What happened? Uh, it's on my hands. I think I killed somebody. I know I killed somebody. Deer fed into the growing suspicions about D&D &D in a book that pointed to the game as a culprit in Egbert's disappearance. But Tim Kask, who helped develop D&D &D with Gary Gygax, 
says Deere was just hyping the story for personal gain. He was a publicity hound. And uh, he knew that he could hang it on D&D &D and gather a lot of media frenzy, and he did. 